Uh, thank you very much, Cahir. Look, uh, Minister, I think this is the first time I addressed you since you were elevated to uh, a Minister of State role. And um, you must be delighted with this budget today. Um, I'm dreading your Instagram account. We'll have you standing in front of housing estates all over South County Dublin talking about the great job you've done. In fairness, the budget is a good budget. Um, it would be remiss of me to stand here and say it's a great budget, but it's a good budget. I am a little disappointed that we went for across the board 12 euros increase in social welfare. The elderly in this country have contributed to the great country that we have today and contributed with their blood, sweat and tears down through the years. And I believe your party wanted to uh, um, reward the elderly for, for their work with more than 12 quid a week or 12 euros a week. And being honest about it, 12 euros isn't going to do a whole lot for uh, an elderly person or an elderly couple. I do appreciate that there is some um, uh, uh, assistance coming in in the area of of uh, fuel allowance and the like, but I do think that the uh, 12 euros is just a, ta a tad miserable at this stage. The country is an extremely wealthy country now and could afford to do an awful lot more. I am delighted to see that you have increased stamp duty for bulk buying of houses, I think, and I do know your commitment, all laughing and joking aside, I do know your commitment to housing uh, and I've seen the work you do on the ground out in the constituency I live in that you represent. Uh, so I, I acknowledge that. 15%, I would like to have seen it higher. We really need to disincentivize these vulture funds that are coming in and make property more available and more, more uh, accessible for the younger people. The residential uh, zoned land tax Wonderful to see that coming around, the days of hoarding. Uh, and, and I think you would know out in our own area, there are large builders that bought massive tracts of land. Now, admittedly, they're moving along as they develop, but w we should be able to see development much, much faster in that area. Um, the uh, personal taxation issues, look, I, 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 I want to say one thing about personal taxation, and particularly USC. That's a Fine Gael photograph, and in it, it's abolished the U USC. Why wasn't it abolished? Or better still, why didn't we just, instead of doing 1%, why didn't we just take a whole tranche of people out of that altogether, uh, and the lower paid? Um, lower paid people are struggling, and we need people in those jobs uh, that are working in the catering industry, are working in various support roles in hospitals and places like that. Why didn't we just take them out of the USC altogether, instead of benefiting people who can well afford to pay the extra few bob for the time being while USB is still around? Minister, I'm deeply concerned about the Apple tax. Right? And let's put a couple of things into, into place here. Bicycle sheds, security huts, hospitals. Do you honestly believe that we should let the people who have allowed these projects go way, way, way out of kilter have access to that money? I'd much rather they handed it all to yourself and some other politician to go out and spend it rather than allowing those who have absolutely behaved recklessly in this country with the uh, state's funds. 2.2 billion now on a children's hospital that was originally supposed to cost 400,000. Uh, and I know that Chambers has announced the development of a framework for the investment of the 14 billion ap Apple money, prioritizing housing, energy, and water. Minister, this country depends massively on foreign direct investment, and we have zero lens on security and defense. We ha have no... We have cables coming through our sea that nobody is able to monitor. We're dependent on the EU to monitor them. We have our defence forces falling apart. It was great to see today that they have increased or made provision for an increase of 400 members of the defence forces. But who's going to instruct them? Because the pay scales in the defence forces, you've done a great job at increasing the pay for the lowest ranks in the defence forces uh, enlisted ranks and for the lowest ranks in the commissioned officers ranks. But what you haven't done is you haven't maintained the differential.
So now being promoted from private to corporal or from cadet to lieutenant or second, sorry, second lieutenant or full lieutenant, it really does very little in it for you by way of money. So from that point of view, I, I really think we should do, uh, we should go back and have a look at that. The other one that has to be looked at is the 2013 pension brought in by the public expenditure and reform people. It was a one fix fits all. It doesn't fit all. It is absolutely repugnant to those who are in uh, the uh, uh, accelerated pension schemes. And we're seeing now, uh, my colleague uh, Senator Byrne made reference to a thousand new Gardaí and fair play to her for acknowledging that. But the problem is we've lost a thousand in the last year because of the 2013 pension. The 2013 pension Minister, you're a really active guy in your role, and one of the things you can bring to Cabinet, one of the things you can bring to the Taoiseach and Minister for uh, Public Expenditure and Reform, who I believe is one of the better ministers that this country has had done through the years, is to actually get them to sit down and look at the damage that was done on the 2013 pension. It is absolutely detrimental to frontline services, and we've got to do something about it. Uh, at the other one, the Single Pension Act, which was brought in by people who walked out of here with great big pensions out of the public service. They brought in a single pension act which has made public service actually something nobody really wants to engage in. And I don't believe you and I don't believe Fine Gael want to see that. I don't believe Fine Fáil either want to see it. I think what we've got to do is get an acknowledgement, and I can only ask that it comes in, in election manifestos now, because this government, I understand, will be gone by the 22nd of November. Uh, that's what I hear today. That's news for all of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd fill you Thank in. Thank you very much, <laughs> Senator Crockford. <laughs> well, I can't help it if Fianna Fáil were briefed on that last night, but that's another day of work. Anyway, the bottom line on it is... The 2013 pension has to find its way into the manifestos of uh, parties going forward for election because it is detrimental to the public service. It is absolutely detrimental to frontline services. Uh, so from that point of view, I would ask for your assistance on that. I really, as a former educator, I've really got to commend you for increasing the uh, book scheme right up to leave insert. Now, that is really, really positive stuff from this government, and I want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge the um, building schemes. One of the things I mentioned earlier on on the uh, deeper debate, Minister, is a billion euros ring-fenced over 10 years in cyber awareness, cyber security, we have to become the best in the world, and we have the expertise in this country to be the best in the world. And again, a, a man like yourself with his fingers or his, uh, his fist on the, the, the purse of, of government, you can do a lot to influence that so you can, and I would ask you to do that. I know we're, and I'm probably moving into areas that are not directly uh, your responsibility today, but I'm moving in, into them because you are a minister with a financial portfolio and you are in a position to do something about that. One final one, housing, something you have a huge interest in yourself. There are military married quarters around the country that the uh, Tanishta and Minister for Defence said he would recommission and get them back up and running. If we got those married quarters, I don't know how many there are, there's not that many, a couple of hundred, but it would take a couple of hundred people out of the housing list and put them into married quarters uh, and perhaps allow other couples to gain access to it. Um, from that point of view, any assistance you can give in that area. Look, overall, I'd love to bash the, the budget to pieces, but there's not much to bash in it. it. It is a good budget. Most people will benefit something from it. I do wish the elderly got more out of it, and I do wish the USC was abolished for people, say, earning less than 40,000 a year, and then maybe in a year's time, get rid of the rest of it. I'm always afraid when we move 1% at a time, what we're doing is keeping the USC alive uh, in case we, we hit a crisis again and need to increase it. So from that point of view, I always think there's a reluctance to get rid of it. Uh, but look, congratulations. Good day for you. Good day to bring a budget to the House, and congratulations in your ministry. Thank you. I really want to 
uh, thank uh, the senators present for their for their timely and uh, very um, detailed contributions, uh, Cahirlik, and indeed your own um, contributions and lead up to the budget. I want to acknowledge your personal commitment as government spokesperson on enterprise trade and employment in this area and the positive um, contribution. There's one or two areas that I'd, I'd like to address before I, I respond to senators, if that's okay, Las uh, Um And in relation to a lot of people have talked about this budget has something for everyone but nothing for anyone, and I think that's just utterly false. Um, this budget is, first and foremost, a progressive budget. It recognises that whilst we do have a growing economy, whilst um, we have full employment, there are still people who are struggling, Laska Hirlik. And distribution analysis, analysis published today shows that the ma measures announced in Budget 2024 2025 are progressive. In net terms, all households benefit from budgetary measures with an average gain of 2.3% in weekly disposable income from the core measures and 1.3% from the one-off cost of living package. However, households in the lowest income deciles will benefit the most from the measures, continuing an overall trend of positively found in recent budgets. So I think it is so important at this uh, very constrained time. There's also a lot of people who said that um, we're investing too much into the economy, we're, we're spending too much. Well, it's very hard for me, or indeed any of us present, last year, like, to turn to those families who are struggling, who are struggling with energy bills, with childcare costs, who feel like they've never worked so hard in their lives, two good incomes, but so much echo, and they just need a little bit of a break. And that's what we'll see today. We'll see today a suite of cost of living measures referenced by the Senator's presence that will really make a difference to so many families and workers up and down the country, but we're also investing in the future. I'd like to refer, um, in relation firstly to the Future Ireland Fund, as referred to by Senator Dolan. Um, over recent years, it's been quite clear the resilience of Ireland's economy has been critical in its ability to absorb fairly, fairly massive global shocks. This has been highly dependent on the strong position of our public finances. To promote the long-term sustainability of our public finances, the Future Ireland Fund and the Infrastructure, Climate and Nature Funds have been established to offset future spending pressures, to provide for counter-cyclical expenditure in economic downturns, and to address climate and nature goals. I was delighted to bring the legislation creating those funds through this particular house. Uh, I'll ask you here, this year, 4.3 billion euro was transferred into the Future Ireland Fund and 2 billion euro into the Infrastructure, Climate and Nature Fund from the National Reserve Fund. A further 4.1 billion euro will also be transferred to the Future Ireland Fund this year, following an, an assessment by the Department of Finance and the Irish Fiscal Ca Advisory Council on the economic and fiscal position of the Irish economy. Transfers to both funds will take place next year. I want to just respond briefly Herlick, to the issues raised by the Senators present and again to thank them for the contributions and I really want to thank um, from the get-go Senator Byrne uh, for her, her strong support of, of the measures taken to help SMEs and to help the economy and businesses more widely indeed as you referenced in great detail Senator Casey speaking from a personal experience indeed as do you Senator Byrne let me not forget that uh, as well as your own uh, combined vast political experience at, at local and national level but these supports are quite clear and it goes to the inherent basins is we need to have a, an economy that functions and that grows in order for us to meet the societal and um, infrastructural um, challenges that face our country um, we will see great support, particularly um, for entrepreneurs, for innovators, and those who wish to scale up. We will continue our support for our multinationals, but equally, that relief given to SMEs, particularly in the 4,000 euro grant, but in addition to that, and I think this is pertinent to your point, Senator Conway, there is a particular emphasis on the raising of VAT, VAT thresholds already um, for, both, for businesses in terms of goods and services. That will provide an additional relief, which I think it needs to be baked into. Let's, uh, let's be frank, I've spoken in relation to the VAT rate for hospitality, the 9% campaign in this chamber. I've spoken in the media, I've spoken with you, uh, Senator Conway, and indeed the Alaska here. Look, but we all know this comes at a cost. It's 740 million euro. That's 50% of our tax package. Unfortunately, decisions do have to be made. But whilst the blunt decision that would benefit a large multinational like McDonald's just as much as it would benefit for the local cafe in, in Ennis Diamond uh, or in, in Avoca has to be balanced out. And that is what this is about. It's about, about balances and it's about accepting that we can do the most for the most. And more importantly, we will see workers and families around the country with more money in their pocket to go out and spend in their local communities, local communities that are being supported by a growing economy. And that is something that we will always completely, absolutely take under account. There's two or three other areas that I just briefly want to refer to uh, Alaska here before I conclude. Um, both Senator Byrne and Senator Curry um, 
under a different heading, but I felt it worthy of noting that both referred um, to, the, to the changes of funding, both for HRT and for second IVF treatments. And I think this is um, some of the most commonsensical, of course, but most compassionate moves that has been made by this government. And it goes through a consistency that this isn't a budget that's just about raw numbers. It's about the people who are behind those numbers. And every single one of us knows that family um, that struggled uh, on their fertility journey, the one in six families that are affected, and equally, all of us know uh, a woman in our life uh, who is facing um, into, into menopause, who needs those supports. And I'd like to pay credit to our own colleague who works in the environs, Councillor Anna Granger, for her very public and vocal and personal campaign on her experience on a menopause jersey and the importance of HRT for her and so many women like her. Um, to touch on one or two of the points that Senator Crockwell made um, before he departed, I think um, his point around the, the USC is, of course, well made, but he, he held up a photo from 2016 16 uh, in an election campaign that didn't lead to a mandate that allowed for that change. And eight years later, we are cutting USC for the second year in a row in a way that is progressive and it is a way that benefits those uh, on the lowest incomes in society. And of course, um, the 12 euro increase to all payments that will help uh, carers, those who are on disability and our pensioners is so important. But so are the additional measures, particularly those for carers that Senator Byrne uh, referenced uh, so eloquently. Um, Senator Casey, I'll take absolutely your, your points on board in relation to loan to value rating, which I know you've raised in this house and other forum going further and I'll bring it back to, um, to Minister O'Hearn and see or Minister O'Brien sorry I don't know where Minister O'Hearn came into it and see if we can uh, move forward Senator O'Hearn apologies um, Someday. Se someday indeed. Senator Conway, I'd like to pay particular credit uh, to you. You didn't mention it, but your own particular advocacy in relation to the blind tax credit in cooperation with your Shannon nominating body, Vision Ireland, formerly NCBI. I know this is of personal importance to you as well, but your continual advoca advocation for those who are visually impaired uh, across our society in this House uh, doesn't go uh, unnoticed by everyone, and I think it's really important. But just in conclusion, I want to touch... Um, Alaska here, look, on the, on the key point that, that, that Senator Dolan um, talked about, how is this possible? And how do we future-proof to ensure that these budgets aren't temporary? We've gone from a situation, Alaska here, look, facing uh, the impact of a pandemic, the likes of which the world hadn't seen in a century, the impact of a war on this continent that hasn't been since the Second World War. And I know, Alaska here, look, you've travelled to Ukraine a number of times. And indeed, those pressures uh, that the impact of that war has had on every household in this country to a situation where we have a surplus of just shy of 24 billion euro where we're able to invest and that's what this budget's about yes it's providing relief but it's also investing in the future the sale of shares in aib will allow for massive infrastructural investment in our water in our energy and in our housing we have seen the general reference um, to the windfall tax um, in relation to the 14.1 billion or, or thereabouts that will be decided upon in the, la in the first half of next year. Um, and that is something where, again, we'll be looking at infrastructure and building out to make sure that our economy is future-proof. Top of that list is, of course, uh, investing in education. We'll see the investment and in education at all levels. This year, we'll see funding for 6,800 craft apprenticeships. That's so vital, not just in terms of building that infra infrastructure, but servicing our economy and, crucially, our communities. We'll see massive investment in our third level institutions to make sure that we continue to have that level of skilled talent, that we're open to attracting skilled talent from across the European Union and beyond, but equally that we're we are developing that skilled talent because the best thing that Ireland has going for it globally, our best export, our biggest draw, it's not just the fact our membership of the European Union, our taxation rates, our English language capabilities, our fact that we're a common law jurisdiction, it is our people. And it's that investment in base level skills, but also continuous lifelong upskilling that you'll see through this budget, and more importantly, the recognition of this through progressive taxation measures that recognise businesses and individuals who are prepared to future-proof our society and our economy going forward. Again, last year, like, I'd like to thank all the senators for their contributions to this debate, and I look forward to the passage uh, of the budget later on this evening and in due course through the various, uh, various connected.